Hi there, everyone. It's Dan from Adventure More UK. Welcome to another podcast with myself. Uh, catch on the flip side. Uh, today, my special guest is producer and presenter of the Epic TV's Climbing Daily Show. It's Mr. Matt Groom. How are you, mate? Hello. I'm very good, Dan. Thanks for having us on. This is the this is the first podcast I've ever done. I've never done really? podcast. apart from the Epic TV one. That's just us talking a load of rubbish. You, this is the first one I've ever done. So thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. No problem. Um, now, obviously, a lot of people might not understand what the your Epic TV the Climbing Daily Show is about. Um, uh, is it? Can you explain a little bit about what it's what it is for people who not necessarily know what it is? Absolutely. So, um, Epic TV is a. Uh, we've been many things over the years, but we're at, at the core we're a sort of extreme sports uh, media channel uh, with a big online shop. And then we used to have all lots of different types of sports, and then we streamlined it down to just rock climbing. And the shop also became just a climbing shop. So, although we sell sort of um, you know like clothes and camping accessories stuff like that, it's all focused towards uh, climbing. So. Yeah. Climbing Daily is a show that's been around. Uh, I've been doing it almost five years now, which is crazy to think, but it's, yeah, it's been yeah. around before my time. Um, and uh, yeah, we just we 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 try to turn out daily climbing content. So every day we put out a video on our YouTube channel and on the website. In recent yep. months, we slightly changed it, so we're now doing sort of maybe about three shows a week because we wanted to focus on making things better rather than just trying to churn out content. Um, yeah, okay. But yeah, it's just a regular rock climbing youtube channel and shop awesome <laughs> awesome yeah so as I, as i said before we before the uh we went live uh, or recorded um i've been watching it for quite a number of years now i i think it's great as i said i'm an aspiring rock climber myself i'm obviously nowhere near to the sort of standard you're at um as i say I, i'm very much sometimes a on a good day <laughs> yeah yeah um now before before epic tv um what what did you do like yourself as a in a sort of personal capacity sure yeah so um so basically my, my life has been based around two things or it was it was based around playing rugby and it was uh based around being an actor so um and both i did to sort of a fairly high level so then i got injured playing rugby at about 16 and that was kind of it okay. my, my rugby career i'm not the, i'm not the biggest as it is um but <laughs> that was certainly the end of, of my career on that one so acting was just me it was what i always did i was a kid actor um and it was just something i was good at and i knew i was probably better than most you know when you've got that thing that you're like okay well i could do this probably pretty well maybe i can make a, a yeah. living out of it so yeah that, that was it so I, I went to drama school um after school uh and i trained for three years became sort of one of those classically trained actors uh oh, awesome. had high aspirations yeah well, i had high aspirations of turning down every single soap that was ever offered and then you leave <laughs> drama school and realize that there's no money and there's no jobs and that everything you can get you try so i, I lived in london for so seven years trying to be an actor yeah. in reality i worked in um department stores i worked as a uh a special needs uh, assistant in schools, kind of oh, okay. bouncing children, basically presenting them from murdering other children. Um, <laughs> but in, a, in amongst that whole period of time, I discovered climbing. Um, and okay. it sort of filled this gap for me, whereas I'd, I'd lost rugby, I hadn't really had a sport, and then climbing came along. And I, I'm one of those people where I become obsessed with something, it becomes everything once I start doing it. And yeah. This, the moment I walked into that climbing wall, my life changed so much because every decision I've ever made since that moment on has been based on or around climbing. Yeah. So I started climbing obsessively. I learned how to do it. I went outside. I went indoors a lot. I built my social life through that. Um, and then it, it started to take the place of the acting as in like the acting was so depressing because you, you have nothing. Yeah you you then your agent rings you up and you have to go you know you have to leave a day's work and go to an audition where they see you for five minutes and that you just know you're not right for it the second you walk in um yeah. whereas climbing is a very you can achieve something with climbing um yeah, and that's course. what i loved about yeah. it that's what was so addictive you know um so i did that and then um and then uh, i retrained i did a master's at sheffield university in okay. journalism okay cool. i uh, discovered it for photography and video and all that there and then my good friend charlie bosco who used to do the epic tv climbing daily presenting job i knew yep. he was leaving 
So I nagged uh, Hugo Pilcher, who's the boss at Epic TV in terms of the content. Yep. I nagged yep. him. Uh, he eventually got me for an audition uh, that he then gave the job to someone else. Uh, and then, oh. but offered me, uh, yeah, I know, I know, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but then he uh, he offered me another job at Epic TV. And from there, I sort of just forced myself into, in front of the camera as much as possible. Uh, and then I was sort of given the presenting job as well as running the sort of social media and helping with the marketing and uh, and doing that so yeah that was my my job at epic and then that was five years ago and i've never left chamonix since and uh i look back and wonder where it's all gone oh that's awesome um i um, the acting side of it um i had obviously doing a bit of research on yourself i i, I understood that you'd done a bit of acting um uh, i'll be honest i didn't really know you did rugby and, and for people that know me i'm a big rugby fan massive rugby oh, fan. okay uh, so like what, what position did you play uh so when i first started i um i i i didn't have a lot of fear um and i quite yeah. like tackling people so they shoved me straight in the scrum so i was hooker for a long time uh oh, wow. and that grew a sort of vicious mentality and then they moved me into flanker that i absolutely loved but yeah realistically like if i was going to look at sort of moving forward with the sport I, I was just never i mean i'm five foot eight i'm not big enough um and i was just yeah. vicious so that the yeah. viciousness got me so far but you reach a point where you're never gonna you're never gonna do it so um and then moved yeah. into scrum half uh which used to annoy me because i hated not being able to get involved because you know your job is to yeah. not get sucked into stuff and i wanted to get sucked yeah, into yeah. stuff. uh so that took a while learning so yeah that yeah. was that was my my oh. final position was kind of scrum half by the end of it I feel like uh, over the years that I've been playing, like scrum house are normally the gobby ones, the little gobby ones that, that uh, tell everyone what to do. Like us, us. Like I, I play, I've I've kind of been playing uh, hooker for the last number of years, but uh, whilst okay. I was in Australia last year, um, I was playing flanker. Yeah, and I think I think that's my preferred okay. uh, preferred position. I, again, I'm only five foot eight, uh, so I'm quite quite short. Mm. Quite. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from. Uh, but I'm, I'm kind of the same yeah. as what most most kids do seems nowadays where i started off on the wing and just worked my way in until i ended up in the front row and now i work i think flank I, it, <laughs> I think flank is my, my my position now it's the best position around because it requires a bit of you've got to have like game knowledge uh you, you've got yep. to be like you know, horrible uh and tackle people <laughs> and then you've you've just I just love the perspective of it. You can control the scrum, you know, without without yeah. being totally on one side or the other. I just loved it. Wonderful position. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. obviously, except from the rugby, and uh, and obviously, unfortunately, you couldn't carry on with that with, you say, for injury, which is, which is obviously yeah. very unfortunate. As, as uh, obviously, I, I believe rugby is one of the best, I think it's one of the best sports in the world. When it, considering, you know, everything that comes with it, with, you know, it's not just playing as well. I feel... It le especially normally i work with kids uh pre pre-covid mm. uh so i I, f I feel like discipline and, and and respect and things like that he's learned quite it's quite a good sport yeah. to learn that kind of thing um now obviously absolutely. before you start and, and, and teamwork yeah, teamwork yeah. wise as well because you know you, you, like, oh, you yeah, genuinely want to like put yourself on the line for the other people in your team and that's i think it's so important for, for moving forward yeah yeah exactly um so obviously before you started getting sort of really into this the the thick of it with you climbing uh was there any other sports you were yeah. interested in or have to go at yeah so i was a big uh i was a big mountain biker uh into downhill oh, okay. mountain biking free riding um yep. grew up with the old new world disorder films uh so it was kind of it was it was it was biking and it was rugby and then nowadays uh i'm lucky enough to, to live in chamonix which is this in the alps in france and yep, yep. so i i trail run ski bike uh i've just learned to paraglide uh that is oh, a, cool. a whole cool. different thing yeah it's weird it's weird and then yeah the yeah. climbing sort of has as well as just rock climbing there's you know mountaineering and all that kind of stuff so there's a yeah, lot yeah. to it from that yeah yeah um I, I i actually obviously before before uh again when i was researching i actually, you, you, you put a yeah. picture up on your instagram with i think it was you skiing when you was like 11 years old i think i've seen that picture <laughs> yeah. yeah um is that I, I, I've never been skiing before. Uh, it's not something I've ever done. Uh, and again, it's big. It's quite a big thing in the military to do skiing. But I was never. I did sailing. Yeah. So I've never done skiing before. Mm -hmm. um, I skateboarded. Okay. I don't know if that's the same. Mm -hmm. I, used to, I used to skateboard. No, as never a kid. skateboarded. No. 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 I, I had I, to. I, I had to learn to. I had to learn to um skateboard for a, for a play. 
it was the opening okay. scene of the play and my character had to appear on a raised platform and skate across the back of the stage in front of everyone uh, okay. and it was one of the scariest things i've ever done and uh there was uh, i was i was messing around backstage once and uh, i was trying to jump the thing and i crashed it like, yeah. minutes before going on and the next yeah. day backstage was this sign that just said mac room is not allowed to ride a skateboard back <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> backstage so <laughs> that was my whole skateboarding life that's it any time i've ever uh, done it now how old were you when that happened and that was at drama school, so I was, uh, that was, uh, uh, so God, I was 20, 20 odd. Oh, okay. Oh, so you didn't have the excuse of being sort of like a teenager or clumsy and, or even younger. No. Just, no, just that's just rubbish. Be... Yeah, yeah. Um, so you say you live in Chamonix now. Uh, now I, mm -hmm. I, I've been, I've been to Chamonix, uh, actually only once before. I, I, I lived in France, uh, about four years, uh, 2016, I lived in France. Um, I lived in the north north of France. Uh, I went down uh, down to Chamonix to uh, do some walking round. Uh, you know that obviously you would probably would have heard the Tour de Mont Blanc. Um, it's like yeah. a a route round the uh, obviously the peninsula in uh, around Mont Blanc, etc. Uh, I'll be honest, I actually only made probably two days of it. <laughs> I've got, I've got what I like to call X squaddy syndrome. Is I, I've got bad knees and bad back. Even though I'm only in my early thirties now, I I, I, yeah. I I struggled really with my knees because it's as you as you it's fully a long well way. know, it is it is. I think it's a hundred and yeah, it's hundred and something kilometers. I'm not sure how it is what it is in miles. It's about sixty something yeah. miles, I think. It's about yeah. five or six six seven days. It's sometimes longer if it depends how far you walk, yeah. I suppose. But um, mm. it's. I can imagine living in Chamonix is it's one of them places where you can pretty much do anything, anything adventure outdoorsy you can do in, in, in the. Yeah, no, you, you can, it's, it's a strange place to live because um, there's, so there's some things you've got to get ahead around. One is that it's, it's extreme and I'll put it in quotation marks because it, it but it is, it's one of those yeah. places where you, everything yeah. you do immediately has consequences, you know, like I, I learned to ski um, and, and it was like, suddenly you're skiing, 45 degree slopes with you know death yeah, yeah. it's like it, it doesn't ease you in um mm. so you have to learn that everyone is better than you at everything yep. at all times so you never shout your mouth yeah. off if you could possibly help it yeah. uh, but it's a very it's a really intense place to live but because there's this constant sort of feeling that you should be doing something and whenever you're doing something it's usually something quite extreme it, it yeah. can it can sort of like play play on you a little bit because it's it's not a relaxing place to live um yeah. and it's actually during the corona lockdowns here because it was very kind of severe in france what we weren't weren't allowed to do and it was yeah. the first time in five years i've looked at the mountains and haven't felt guilty about not being in them um oh, okay so yeah it's a, it, it's a it's an extreme place to live but it's stunningly beautiful and i'm incredibly lucky to be here yeah it is really nice um as as you mentioned do, you do a bit of photography uh, you know i i do photography mm -hmm. as a hobby um and landscape particularly so I, i've got good some yeah, you know a few good photos from that part of the world um now before uh you lived in chamonix whereabouts did you did you say you lived in around in and around london yeah i lived in cricklewood which is like north london okay. um okay so i lived there so I, I went to uni there and lived in that area for, for where for my where my drama school was and then yeah, i moved okay. back there for sort of life after drama school uh yeah and i did that for seven years and it was amazing like i couldn't i couldn't think it was that like the world was centered around london you know it, i couldn't imagine living anywhere else um mm. and although the climbing allowed me to go out of london you know i do constant yep. weekend trips and stuff it was still i was based in london and then went to or went traveling so did the classic dropout went to india went to the pole and just yep, yep. went away and, and i think that gave me a bit of perspective perhaps there's a world outside it um and then i moved to sheffield for a year and a half which yep. was amazing i loved it out there uh, you, you, you really don't uh, have yeah. to say it's amazing <laughs> i've been to sheffield <laughs> it's not quite that. it's all right it's on the wrong side of the Pennines, but, but you know <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if if you like the, the city itself, take it or leave it. But the, the yeah. if you're into like climbing with the outdoors around it, it's like yeah. I mean, I was I used to drive from London for three and a half hours to get to the crag that was ten minutes from my house living in Sheffield. You know, as a climber, I was right. like, I can't believe I live here. It was yeah, it was amazing for that. Yeah, yeah. It, um, I feel with rock climbing, uh, obviously. I suppose you can boulder by yourself. It's not ideal, but you could. Mm -hmm. But obviously, doing trad or sport climbing definitely is a no-no. You can't do that. Um, so, no. 
it's a very communal sport. Like you, you make a lot of friends uh, doing climbing, uh, and that's something that I really mm-hmm. enjoy. Obviously, it's a little bit difficult at the moment. Obviously, with the current crisis we're going through, but yeah, you know, normally it's very good to go get out and about and see things uh, from you know all over the all over the country, really. And obviously, for yourself, mm-hmm. all over that part of France. Um, now, mm-hmm. when you started working at Epic TV, um, was there any particular sort of places you'd like to visit or people you'd like to interview, etc.? Anyone in particular? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, when I came into the Epic TV job, I I had, I was the same as everyone else. Like I watched all the climbing videos. I had my climbing heroes. Um, and so if you ever wanted to go back and watch all the shows, every time I meet these people, especially the first time, that was the first time I've met them. So yeah. it allowed me to sort of see it perhaps from a viewer's perspective because okay. it was you know, the yeah. first time I met, my first, my first ever climbing daily trip, we went to um, Finland for something called the okay. CSU Masters, and it had it had Daniel Woods, um, Jimmy Webb, Nelly Hukatavel, uh, Dave Graham, like just my heroes, especially of yeah. American climbers. Yeah, um, yeah. And like I, I don't feel particularly in, intimidated by that. You know, I'm I'm a I'm a gobby so I can I can go you put a microphone in my mouth and you know my yeah. hand on the camera and I will go and talk to these people and make a fool of myself. I'm fine yeah. with doing that. But yeah, it was it was amazing. I mean, there's. I've met everyone who I'd ever want to meet, I think. Um, yeah. Who haven't I? I can't think of who I haven't met, actually. Uh, uh, but, uh, have you met, have you and, met Alex Arnold? Uh, have you met Alex Arnold? Yes, I have. I've met him and I've met... Yeah, I have. I've met, I've met Alex and I met his mum. So I met uh, yeah. I met Alex a few years ago now in a place called Fairhead in Northern Ireland. Uh, and there's a climbing okay. festival that takes place there. And it was interesting because... I was a bit intimidated by him. I was quite starstruck by him. Um, it helped a little bit because uh, he gave me his number and I was, I went and picked him up from outside his Airbnb uh, in yeah. this nor- little Northern Ireland town. And that sort of, it yeah. sort of brought it all down a little bit. But um, yeah, so he, and he went and actually he, so he was doing a talk and he was climbing uh, there and he went and soloed this climb called the complete scream, which was this route that had only ever been done by a guy called Pete Whitaker before. Uh, on site okay. and when sorry it'd been done by people but pete was the last one to kind of do it and he did it on site and he yep. uh he did it with sky hooks taped to his chest as he went up okay, okay. So he could then take off and put onto things so okay. when we, we we'd seen alex and he'd been climbing around all day we knew we'd got stuff scheduled in for the next day but you know we were after content so we had a bdi on him and he was trying this route called the complete screen which is this massive blank looking wall uh, on these sea cliffs yep. By that point, he'd been climbing all day and it was really hot. Uh, so we were like, okay. look, he's not going to go for the sending. He's not going to try to solar it. And we had to, I had to go and do a climb. So I decided that we, it was time just to, to do it. So I abseiled down the cliff and myself and the person who was, I was climbing with was at the bottom of the cliff. And at that moment, Alex Honnold pulled on and started soloing this thing. <laughs> so we're like, oh, okay. So the, ca- the, the cameraman obviously stays at the top of the cliff because I mean, it's Honnold soloing. Like, you know, he's yeah, going yeah. to film it. And myself and a gentleman called Paul Swale, who's a mountain guide out here, we, we were the only ones at the bottom of this cliff looking up at yeah. Adam, like 100 foot up, whatever. I just stuck a GoPro on a helmet and left it there. But both me and him, we had this moment where it, it, it came quite uncomfortable because we were watching someone do something that we knew was hard and scary. Yeah. Paul had done an E6 that went into that route, so he knew kind of the footholds and the hand placements he was in. And, okay. and we realized that if he had if he had fallen off or something, we would have been the first ones, the only ones at the bottom of the cliff uh, to see that. So actually, we had to like walk away at one point because we it was yeah. so stressful watching it. We couldn't handle it. We walked away and then came back when he did it. Um, but yeah, that was, the, that was the first time I met Alex. And he was a lovely, lovely man. And then I met his yeah, mom yeah. in Kendall last year. <laughs> oh, OK. Oh, cool. Um, was that up at the, uh, the, the climbing gym up there? Uh, is it the uh, that side? was part of the Kendall... Yeah, it was it was the part of the Kendall Mountain Film Festival. Um, so yeah, oh, okay, near that okay, time. cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, just just going back to Alex a second. Like, so people who don't know who he is, yeah. um, they'll be probably more familiar with him with his free solo uh, film. Mm-hmm. Um, again, if you haven't watched it, um, I su- suggest to watch it. It is incredible. Uh, I watched it with yeah. my mum, and now my mum's not anything. Okay. you know, she's not. She's not. Uh, a climber or anything like that she's just you know your day-to-day mum uh, and mm. she actually enjoyed it because she was enjoy she enjoyed the story as well it's not just the fact that this man climbed 
El Capitan in, in obviously in Yosemite in California, um, mm-hmm. which is deemed to be slightly for people who don't know, it's probably like the Everest, isn't it? For climbers, I would say. Yeah. 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 Uh, um, obviously the story behind it is not just the fact that he just climbed it without any ropes or anything like that. It's a story which it took him, I believe like over 10 years of training just to be able to climb that one sort of face. It's that's quite yeah. incredible as dedication that is. Yeah, it, it is. And, and, you know, he's, it's, it's funny when you meet him because he, he doesn't say anything that you haven't heard before, you know, you, and I think every time, every, every time someone tries to interview him, they try to, yeah. to uncover the secret for Honnold. And I, I, I yeah. think it's pretty simple. I think he's just wired differently. And I think he just yeah. sees the things that he does as totally acceptable in his world. Like he understands yeah. they're scary. He understands that most people can't yeah. do it, but for him, it's, he's not trying to be extreme. He's just, he's just doing what he knows what to do. And it's, yeah. it's normal for him. Yeah, it's yeah. um it's it's absolutely crazy. Um and as it goes, it's the same with uh again with the other the other film that most people may have seen. It's on Netflix at the moment actually, the uh, Dawn Wall, uh with Tommy Caldwell, isn't mm-hmm. it? Uh, uh he's the same he actually they kinda of trained together, didn't they? For for a majority of it, I believe. Yeah. He's in it, I think friends, they're but yeah, they are good friends and um again it's just something that personally like I look at what he did as a as an aspiring climber. I'm not obviously, as I say, I'm not very, I'm not that good at the moment. But I, you know, I hope to get better. Mm-hmm. But just in them individual crags, you know, the individual routes that he goes up on, it's it's incredible. Like some of them are ridiculously hard, ridiculously hard. And people who obviously mm-hmm. aren't climbers will look at that and think that is one of the. It, it was believed to be one of the most athletic sort of endurance events or, you know, performances ever in any form of sport. Um, and again, if you haven't watched it, it'll be on Netflix or on Sky or anything like that. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really good. Yeah. With, um, so with yourself, uh, what's, uh, personally and professionally, what kind of future endeavors have you got in plan or potentially you'd like to do? Um, Sure. I, I mean, I think, I think climbing wise, I think it's, what's great about the sport is you can, the second you achieve something, there, there's another thing to achieve. Um, mm. So I, I wanted to, so, so if, if you're listening, you don't know climbing, there's lots of different grades um, yeah. and they represent different types of the sport. But I, I, this, this summer I wanted to climb my first AA boulder. Um, that was my goal. Okay. And I've been training really hard to do that over last winter and then sort of Corona hit. And then I, I was in a place called Magic Wood in Switzerland, bouldering, and I, I yeah. uh, sort of blew a, a ligament on my finger. So oh, well. didn't achieve that goal, but uh, okay. I would like to get that ticked. Hopefully next summer would be the plan, bouldering-wise. Um, and then I don't know, really. It's just, I, yeah, I think I think you can, you can always get stronger. You can always get better. Um, and also climbing is one of those wonderful but irritating sports whereas if you let it go for a while you lose it so yeah but yeah. that's quite good because it, if you if you're into training and, and trying hard then it, it's not like you can you know if you ride a bike you can come back to a bike after a couple of months off and pretty much pick up from where you go you might be a bit rusty but you, you know you've got you've got it whereas yeah, climbing yeah. It's, it's like you start again you're like it God, is I'm it rubbish. is yeah it and, is, and i quite like that in a way yeah yeah it's it is interesting like i said obviously when the first lockdown hit um obviously people weren't able to climb properly really for, for many months really obviously they started opening up again now um and it's mm-hmm. something that uh people can get back into um if you could give say i don't know, let's say three tips uh for you like your let's say training methods or tr- something to improve your climbing because obviously there's different aspects of you know it could be your grip strength your flexibility etc mm-hmm. um what would you say if your three magic mat tips <laughs> magic mat tips okay um yeah. these might be a bit controversial but i can say anyway so i, I think okay. i think volume is important so i think i think if okay. you really are serious about improving i'm not talking about just enjoying climbing because there's like two categories people who enjoy climbing people want to improve right so if you yeah. want to improve i think you have to be climbing three times a week i really do okay. um okay i know that's hard for people especially if you've got kids yeah. family jobs but like three sessions a week training or just climbing or whatever if you do that you will see a progression in it um so i think that's important i think overall fitness is is quite important like i've had various injuries throughout my 
my climbing life and whenever I have an injury that prevents me from climbing I try to keep fit still and when I come back I'm surprised at how quickly I can come back just because I have an, a, a fitness level so I think yeah. cross training running all that kind of stuff is very important um but the, the main one is, and I only really realized this when I started a training program with a company called Lattice last year, yeah. which yeah. is, is that y you can sort of try harder than you think you can. Um, like you really can. It, it's like, if you want to get better at something, you have to seriously grind. Like you have to put the work in. It's yeah, going to take a while. You have to build up to it. And that's something I didn't realize because I thought I was climbing hard. I thought I was climbing smart. I thought I was training well and i wasn't and i wasn't working hard enough so that was a big eye opener for me was just like i've i've half asked this and i can do better yeah yeah um so <clears throat> with with climbing obviously we spoke about how it's quite a communal uh a communal uh, sort of uh, sport as such or a hobby some people call it a hobby um now if you were to sort of try and convince someone to come and do it because obviously there'll be a lot of people mm -hmm. who are listening and they may look at it and think they look at obviously the big climbs. They go to a climbing gym or outside uh, doing sport climbing yeah. or whatever it may be, and they'll obviously there's a lot of people who are scared of just taking that step and going out and climbing. Mm -hmm. And again, like I said, there's more benefits than just the actual climbing side of it. There's the social side of it. What would be sort of like your tip or advice for people who don't really want to? They're on the edge of like maybe doing it. Sure, it's it's a really good question. Um, I, I I think, I think something that I found reassuring that may not be to some people is that climbing is one of those sports where when you walk into that climbing wall, you are judged on what you do and how you behave in that climbing wall and in that environment. Yeah. It's a lovely leveler. You know, you can be, you know, you can get you can go into a climbing wall and and people will talk about what you're doing, what you're trying to do. They'll chat to you. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're like super rich, super poor, it really doesn't matter because it's about that moment in time in that climbing wall. So it's, yeah. it's a wonderful escape for, for, for me. And I think for a lot of people, and it's a sport which doesn't judge you on exterior things or, or what you're about. It judges you on what you're doing in that moment. Uh, and that's very freeing, I find. So I, I would yeah. recommend getting into that just because of that really. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think majority of people who do climb, they're very sort of, uh, they, they'd like to give you tips and tricks uh, along the way to help mm -hmm. you progress and, and perform better. Um, I've always been told, you know, you take them, take them on board, but sometimes obviously people have bad habits and things like that. But, and so that's, that's yeah. certain things that certain things that you'll get used to. Uh, you'll sort of learn yeah. along the way. Uh, people will like, tell you something and then someone else will tell you the opposite. Uh, but yeah. generally you can, you know, go online and I say you can go onto the Epic TV website or onto the, onto your YouTube channel. And there's some great videos. Yeah. I've learned, I've actually learned a few things prior to going on courses. Um, okay. I'm actually doing my, my rock climbing uh, instructor award at the moment. Well, cool. Kind the of CWA thing. Is it still called that? No, well, it used to be. It's called your RCI now. It's yeah. just called a rock climbing instructor. Oh, okay. um, obviously, okay. you can do that through the mountain training website. Um, but yeah. obviously, at the moment, it's a bit on edge at the moment with what you know the current yeah. climate we're in. But something I'm planning to complete next year, uh, along with you did mentioned earlier about mountaineering. Um, so I did mm -hmm. I did my mountain leader award when I was in the military uh, oh, many cool. many years ago, sort of fifteen years ago now. Um, so it's something I'm hoping to bring back. Um, and also something that a lot of people are aware of, something I've done recently is I'm, I'm big into first aid, uh, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe first aid is a, is a very sort of, uh, it's a very good skill to have. Um, and a lot of people don't see it as that really, I don't think. Like obviously no matter where you go, whatever company, you know, what you know, the business or schools or whatever it may be, they always have to have, first aiders and you know I, i've told this story before but i remember doing a course once and we had a a stop our instructor told this this story about a nine-year-old girl who saved her mum's life just because of something she'd learned at school and that just little things like that it's it's all worthwhile um so it's something that that's that's my sort of plans for the next sort of hopefully six months or so after after the year 
And um, so I, I, but, I get to call you when I'm lost and hurt, right? And you can help me out. Yeah, it may take me a while though to get down to Chamonix. It might take me a while. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't have a helicopter to hand, unfortunately. Um, oh, fine, fine. I've, I've got, I've, I've got a bike. I've got an old, old rusty bike. It might take me a while, but I'll get That'll there. That'll do. Be, yeah. I'm sure it's um, my fault for getting in that situation anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, la one of the last things I want to ask you is if mm. you could pick, so you got yourself and let's say two others, it doesn't have to be climbing, mm. but just any any old adventure, who and what would you do? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, I haven't climbed the north face of the Eiger, so I very much like okay. to climb the north face of the Eiger. Um, okay. And I have to bring, I'd have to bring my mate Pete, who uh, taught okay. me really to climb. He was there from the beginning. Yeah. He's uh, he's back in London. He'd be rubbish. He'd be rubbish on the Eiger. Like honestly, he'd be a liability. But I'd love to take yeah. him up that thing. <laughs> he's uh, yeah. he's one of my best friends. I'd love to see him there. Um, I think my girlfriend for sure. She'd she'd have to be there. Oh, um, yeah, I'm, have, I'm, teach, I'm teaching her the alpinism <laughs> ways. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Go get that in. But if I was kind of ignored, if I had to take someone, I don't know. It's, it's inter I think I think I wouldn't necessarily want someone who's sort of a, a, a climber necessarily because um, yeah, yeah. You know, there, there's amazing people I could bring along with me. Like you know, I could bring Honold and he could he could rope gun all the pitches and it'd be incredible. But yeah, I, yeah, exactly. I, I think that when you look back, but when you look back at climbing climbing missions that you've done, you for me anyway, I remember the people and the fun more than the climb uh yeah so i'd want to bring people who make me smile on it yeah me. exactly someone i can look oh, back in five years and be like i climbed the north face of the Iger and we did this you know yeah exactly cool. I, I i think for myself um if i could pick anywhere in the world uh something i actually wanted to do this year but unfortunately because of what as i said before what's going on uh, i want to go to the norwegian fjords um Ooh, and that's yeah. more of it yeah that's more in a that'll be probably more in a walking capacity rather than a climbing and mm -hmm. I think the one person who I would like to bring, uh, and beyond anyone in my family, um, not that they probably want to do that anyway, but <laughs> they, <laughs> yeah, I, I actually, I actually interviewed him uh, on this podcast a couple of weeks ago. Uh, is Sean Conway? Um, are you, do, you, do you know Sean Conway? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, I'm, I interviewed him a couple. Of yes, weeks I do. Ago. I've seen, I've seen the videos and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's honestly he's amazing. He's a he's a cool guy, really cool guy. Um, and I think I'd learned a lot yeah. from him. Um, I think if I if if I wanted to add one more person, you you know you had two people, I'll add mine. Uh, Le Leverson Woods is one of my heroes. He's uh, again if okay. again people he's he's ex military like myself. He's gone from you know doing a, I think it was four or five years in the military, coming out as a captain. Uh, and now, now he's making programs for National Geographic and, you know, Channel 4, etc. Um, and it's not the fact that he's famous. It's just, he, again, he's such a cool guy. He's into photography like myself. Um, and I feel like he's, he represents, like, a lot of things that people can relate to. So that's someone definitely I would love to go climbing with. Or not climbing with necessarily, but on an adventure with experiencing um, with adventure yeah experience yeah, like yeah adventure yeah and that, that's that's um that's what i feel like uh, it would be be good to do um i've i'm gonna thank you matt for for coming and talking to me today uh it's oh. been great um as i say i i wanted to get you on i've been watching your videos uh for quite a number of years now um and then i feel like they're great i actually use as i said earlier a lot of them to to sort of improve myself um as much as i can as much as we can at the moment and it you know if anyone wants to sort of get on to sort of climbing or even just general sort of adventures uh and stuff it's not all about climbing i know you mentioned it is a lot more orientated mm. towards climbing but there is generally some other uh, non-climbing based stuff um for people who yeah. want to get in, uh, involved or want to see what you've been up to etc is there any way they can kind of keep an eye on your on your, on your ventures sure yeah so there's uh so if you search for epic tv or climbing daily on youtube you'll come up with all the videos uh i have a yep. blog which is just search my name matt groom my instagram matt groom one uh follow along that if you want to but yeah it's mainly the the uh the, the epic tv stuff um 
so yeah yeah as you said lots of different videos uh looking at different aspects of climbing but also just outdoor skills as well and just telling amazing stories of athletes so go and check that out but yeah, Dan, awesome. thank, thank you so much thank you so much for having me i mean i I've, as i said i've never done a podcast and it's an absolute pleasure to speak to you so thank uh, you so much like i said i appreciate that uh, that can be the first person you've ever spoke to on a podcast uh like i said i'll put all the links in the description um so you can check them out um if you want to continue and look at what i'm doing and what matt's doing again i'll put links in please like the video please subscribe to the channel and if i don't catch you soon i'll catch you on the flip side